What's up people? And today let us talk about retaliators. This is one of those times when Hasbro got it right. Uh, if you can get hold of one of these, it's well worth it. This is the inspiration behind the work of prophecy, which as we all know can get up to about 200 FPS quite easily. Uh, so yeah, the retailer. This is my personal pistol. I like using this with an 18 dart uh, drum magazine as a sidearm for indoor wars in the UK. Air restrictor out, 7 kilogram spring, super simple, and it doesn't half hit reasonably well. I am going to see if I can get some of these darts through the chrono, and we shall see what we get. Let's get that nice and level. There you go, 105. There is a little bit of uh, brass in the bolt because I cut it in half. 122. And that's that. That is nice. I like that. That's good. I also have a uh, higher performing one. This gets about 150 and has mainly got cedar. Uh, a cedar bolt and a cedar uh, bolt sled in it. <clears throat> Quite what this gets depends on the darts. What I'm doing this for is to illustrate that the retailer has a lot of uh, potential. Let's see if I can get this straight down there. That came out at 121. But it has hit up to 160 with the uh, worker gym threes. Oh, that's why. That's why that came out at 121. <laughs> Blew the head off the damn dart. Look at that. It's another glue job, isn't it? Interestingly enough, I am toying with the idea because I have loads of full vinyl jackets that I, I bought when I knew no better. And they've got quite nice foam on them. And I was wondering how they would work as short darts with these heads on. Anyway, anyway, that's enough of that. That thing can hit up to 160 on a 9K spring. Anyway, the point is you can do quite a lot with a retaliator. So what I wanted to do was have a retaliator pistol running off a 7 kilogram spring that was brass barreled short dart only and pretty much got up to about 130 ish you know just under the uk cap because i haven't actually got a short dart magazine for pistol so here we go this is our retaliator i have taken everything out this is going to be short dart only so all you need are your catch your bolt and bolt sled your plunger tube and your trigger. Everything else, obviously you keep the tack rail and the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the little bit in the grip that holds a spare dart for deep priming. Anyway, I have ripped everything else out because I don't want it, and those are going to go in the bits box at some point. So, we're going to brass this. <coughs> Now, I have done quite a few brass breaches, and one of the things I've discovered is that I hate drilling the bolts out by hand. It is a royal pain in my bum. I don't like doing it. I do it by hand because if you use a drill and get it wrong, it's very easy to mess this up. Uh, but there we are. So I was looking around, I was thinking, is there a way to do a brass breach without having to drill out the bolt. So I thought about the geometry of uh, a stock breech. It's not quite 
more than enough to put 17, 30 seconds brass in all the way. And if you're doing a sleeper breach, you really want this to be lined with 916s. This will not fit. You have to drill it out, and it actually makes the, the walls fairly thin. Uh, sleeper breaches are efficient. They make full use of the dart uh, space. You know, you haven't. That's where your dart goes to. So you really want to drill out about that much at least. And then you have to do a dart uh, tongue thing on the top out of brass. And it's a right pain in your bum. And I'm a bit tired of it. On the other hand, on the other hand, I shall just go and get a bit of uh, 17 sixteenths because that is what we are going to be using for this kind of ish. So what I'm going to do, oh, whoops, that piece of brass is actually in here. <laughs> okay, 17, 30 seconds brass. There are we. Here we are. 17, 30 seconds brass. Yep, 17, 30 seconds. This... will kind of fit in here without doing anything to it, but that's as far as it will go and you have to drill it out. And besides, you need 9 sixteenths to do your, your sleeper breach. <coughs> so I thought, well, given all the kits that are coming out, and a lot of them are pushers, you know, they use, uh, well, basically, it's like all the drop-in kits you can get, you know. The short dart ones anyway. Simple, easy to do, and uh, really quite good. You get a little more dead space, but we could always try and fill that up by putting some foam from the dart in this. I'm going to try that. And uh, yeah. Now, we want a 17 16. 17, 16, 17, 30 seconds, sorry, in a diameter brass barrel. And we also want to nest this into our bolt. So we want something that will go into the bolt. Excellent. That's good. I just had a piece of nine, 19, uh, nine, 1930, nine floating about here, and it's gone somewhere. For the love of God. That's ridiculous. Things disappear off this table. So rather than have a nine uh, nine sixteenths bolt, we're going to have a bolt as a pusher. That's why I've cut this bit off because this needs to rest right up in there. This is the worker uh, <coughs> breech bit, I think you call it. And, it replaces this and pretty much does everything this does. I'm using this because it's see-through and because it's got these two little, this little bit here that'll help me fix the barrel in place. But you can do this, it's just a teeny bit more complicated. Where the hell did that bit of brass go? Oh, that is frustrating. Anyway, all right, we won't worry too much about that, will we? I can find that. Okay, rambling over. So I want uh, a 17, 30 seconds barrel in here somewhere. And I want our pusher to come in here and push the dart into there. Well, actually not all the way into there because that would be bad. What I want, uh, having just destroyed my dart, I have to get another one. What we want, and of course this is going to be short dart only. What we want is... There you go, Worker Gen 3. We want our dart to be pushed up to here. We don't want to push it all the way in. We want that like that. And to get our pusher to seal into this easily, we're going to put some 19, some 9, we've got a 9 sixteenths brass around here, which is why that's going missing has been quite annoying. Hell and death. Right. Anyway, so that's the plan. But before we can do that, we are going to have to...
take out our air restrictor. I'm going to dremel down through the back of this using my favourite tool. I can get can I get down out of there. Oh yes, because I can push this back. Yep, that will do. So now we are going to just do this. Spring out. That then leaves us with the actual air restrictor bit itself. Now what I am going to do is push that all the way in there and then dremel out that so it comes out. Now, if I get hold of our file, let me see, let me get a nice long file. Hopefully, we should have done enough damage to that to be able to push it all the way out. No, what we're doing, I don't know if you can see that, is we're basically just removing enough material that this becomes useless. Anyway, I don't want to start hammering this about because that would be bad. This way is worse in terms of time and safer <coughs> in terms of damaging the bolt. Okay, so that should be about ready to come out in a second. So I'm just going to now file out the supports for the dark post, or try to anyway. If I can get this, that's too wide. All right. Is there enough of that in there for me to get a pair of pliers on it? simple. that moving part all the way back I should be able to get in there and get it out it's quite hard to film this and look down the end and see what I'm doing aha gotcha Put 
this in here, I should. for us to get the pliers in there and we can just start pulling bits out and the more of it we pull out there we go there's the last bit of our air restrictor and that just leaves us our dark peg uh, strictly speaking we could leave that in but we're not I'm just going to file through the supports until that comes out. Not much in the way of stress. Good, that's good. So, we've got our bolt ready. What are we going to do with it? We need to make an airtight seal. We could drill it out and put some 17 30 seconds in there. But I like doing that by hand and it's a pain in your ass and it takes forever. So I had a think and I thought about this. Half inch brass. This goes in very, very easily. It's loose because these things are wider at this end. And then it's tight down here. So we can simply do that. And we friction fit it. And that is almost all the way down to where our dart was. That's it, that's all we have to do. However, we have an issue. And the fact is that this will seal into nine, uh, 1730 seconds but it will make feeding the darts rather difficult. So what we want to do is have our 1730 seconds barrel shrouded in a bit of 9 sixteenths and our bolt here, we want it to be uh, shrouded in a little bit of 17.30 seconds on a screwdriver to enable us to uh, not chop the end of the dart up which is what's going to happen if we put something so small into that. I can't find that screwdriver either. Things are going missing all over the shop today. Seriously annoying. <sighs> I had it not a minute ago. I really did, and I don't know where it's gone, and that is frustrating. <sighs> okay. Pause while I go and find the brass and the tools. Right, that's better. So we can just take this off. can see how far forward we're gonna put our, our pusher because we want our pusher to get far enough into the barrel to give us a good air seal and come back far enough to allow us to actually pick up the dart. So Because this is a short dart blaster, we need a short dart adapter. I'm using a worker one because they're the cheapest, most readily available ones that I can get my grubby mitts on. So, 
let's put our bolt sled in the right place. Yep, that's that. And we want our ah, marvelous. Right, pull that off, thread that on there. I don't want to cut this until I know what I'm looking at. And now that's come off that. I do hate it when that happens. Okay, so there's our bolt all the way back. That is where our magazine sits. So I'm actually going to put a dart in that so we can get this the right way. And I did find that length of nine sixteenths. And now I can't find it again. Ha! My life is one long story of things getting lost. So I'm going to actually have to fiddle with this a bit. There we go. Right. So all the way back. To get that on the pin. Yeah. So that tells us how long we want our pusher to be. Just to make sure... We'll stick the plunger tube in. Yep. So that's all the way back, and that tells us basically that to clear this, we want to pencil, 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 pencil. We basically want our dart pusher to stop. About there. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Okay, so that's good. So what we're going to do now is cut that. And to do that, we are going to use. You can do it with a hacksaw. You can do it with a Dremel. Why make life hard for yourself? Use a pipe cutter. Actually, I'm going to go a little forward of that line because I can always take some more off. Right. There we go. That's our half inch brass, which we will put aside for another use. We've got enough for another two breaches there. It's good, because if this works out reasonably well, I may very well do a long shot like this, because it saves so much bloody time. Okay, uh, let's test that for fit. Let's test this for fit and function. Don't need that for the moment. Plunger, our plunger tube all the way back. Everything's properly aligned. Yep. I will have that lock out. Okay. Yep, that's all the way back. Let's put our bolt in. No, no. A spring just went flying about. Does this work? Well, it's catching a bit, but that's not surprising because everything's just held in place. But it's, it's long enough, even if we've got the darts at the rear of the magazine. Yep, that's good. That's good. Oh, that was the magazine catch. Right. So that goes there. And because this is all unsupported, it's actually being a tricky. There. there we go. Come on. What's that catching on? Catching on something anyway. There we go. All the way forward. So that tells us where we want. Right, let's get that out of the 
out of the way. So that's long enough. We also know. <sighs> this is not like mucking about right side. We also know that that's going to push our dart into here. Yes? That is where our dart is going to end up. So that's good. Now, I did mention that this is going to start chipping darts and stuff, and it will, despite having a little crimp on the end. So I've cut a little bit of 1730 seconds, and I'm going to epoxy that on here, and that will seal into the 19, uh, the 916, which I've slightly flared, and provide a fairly decent air seal. Let's see what sort of air seal we're getting out of that. That's a good air seal. Okay. So we're going to epoxy this onto there. And because this was cut with a pipe cutter, it is beveled. So we don't have to worry about that. Where's the epoxy? Where did I put the epoxy? Oh, you can tell there's certainly a bunch of uh, not very well organised stuff going on here today. Right, let's clear the decks. Let's get rid of everything we're not using. Otherwise, we're just going to get a shot of me being mucky. And we don't want that. Right. Ease of use. I'm going to take this pin out again. Ah, mixing tray. Mixing tray for the epoxy. Where did I put that? Aha! So there we go, we've brassed the breech, we've taken the air restrictor out, and we're just finishing off the pusher. This stuff dries in 15 minutes. We're not taking any weight on this, we're not putting any stress on it, but we'll leave it for about an hour. While we're doing this, we'll make, while we wait for this to dry, we'll make the... Uh, Barrel. There we go. I'll put that aside to dry. Okay, onto the barrel. The barrel, yes. Okay, that can sit there and dry. for that to dry, so we've got to put that back in there just slightly, there's the pin, there we go, all the way forward, and our bolt sled is there, so we want our 9 sixteenths with the flared end to be about here, especially as the darts going to be there. I'm just going to put that back in there. This is why these sculpting tools are really quite useful. They're really rather good for putting springs in and things because they're thin enough that you can just press the spring down and get it in. Most of the time, anyway. There we go. So that's going to go there. And our 
barrel is going to be here. Now this gives us a problem, doesn't it? Because as this comes forward, once it gets to there, it might well start fluttering about. There's us like that. Oh, and then we've got the usual problem with the fucking slide catching or something. There we go. As soon as this enters the barrel, it will be okay. Because we want this to feed, obviously. We don't want a lot of problems. So if we put that there, just hold that in there as a... Aha! We have feed lips, look. I bought this. As soon as this clears that, it feeds in. So we can see this is why I used a clear one for illustration purposes. All we've got to do is put a 9 sixteenths right about there, which means we need about that much 9 sixteenths. Wrong bit, wrong tube, 9 sixteenths. There. And we're going to put that round about there. Gives us a bit of wiggle room. Okay. paint this in it's right so where was I oh yes we are going to put just a flared end uh, pliers in twist you trumpet out the end like that can you see that I don't know if you can see that but you can certainly feel it so that's our end and that's going to be somewhere around there so yeah, we're going to cut that with our trusty pipe cutter. Oops, wrong way. And I don't think we need a dark guide. I really don't. If we do, we should make one. I don't think we do. And hey, I've got enough left over to make another one. So we'll just trumpet that end out a bit because we are going to have to have that fitting on our 9 sixteenths, uh, 17 30 seconds barrel. And that means the brass. Is that 17 30 seconds? Yeah. Basically, we do this. <sighs> Might be an idea to wear gloves when you're doing this. I frequently take chunks out of my damned hand. Not quite. There we go. So basically, what we want is this to be about there. Because we've got our trumpet end. This will just slot into there. 
can be good. And I don't think we need a dark guide. I really don't. What we do need, however, is a way of getting that central in there. We could use E-tape. But I bought a bunch of uh, copper the other day. So I'm thinking about using copper instead. Don't think we can get as good an air seal. Mm. Okay. That's our build end. That goes in there. Let's get this the right length. That's it. This is going to go in there. And that's going to be e tape. I think with that having uh, some dry and time to do, that would be the end of part one. Okay, uh, we brassed our bolt without any uh, drilling or any major effort. We'll make it a very simple barrel that will just whoop, slide in beautifully. All this will get polished, of course, sanded and polished. And in part two, we'll finalise the installation of the barrel and we'll test it and see what uh, what length this should be because on a 7k spring this is too long anyway there we go talk to you in part 2